Hi, I'm Bob Garrett. Hackensack University Health Network believes that all citizens need to be informed about the important health issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Wells Fargo, Caldwell University, Suez, ready for the resource revolution, Hackensack Meridian Health, Hackensack University Medical Center Foundation, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and by Century 21 Construction. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, small news, big news, true Jersey, and by Jaffe Communications, where business, media, and government converge in New Jersey. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got this? this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. With this close to heaven, you'll be in the money unless you crop out. Box guys, think guys, that's all it'll take, guys. A kid is a honey, he'll do it, no doubt. Now go long. That is from A Bronx Tale, the musical, and right here you've got Nick Cordero from A Bronx Tale playing over at what theater? At the Long Anchor Theater on 48th Street. Yeah, you, you, you play Sonny. I do. I play Sonny. That's Chaz Palminteri's role. I know. Well, That's he, the role. He trusted it to, to me, and I'm very honored. What's that feel like? It feels, uh, it feels great. It's a great role. Um, you know, it's an iconic role. It's, it's the role that people, you know, when Chaz walks down the street, they don't call him Chaz. They call him Sonny. And I remember you one... You look like Sonny. Thanks. I get that a lot. It's true. Uh, and he turned to me once when we were walking down the street. He's like, they're going to be calling you that one day. And I was like, wow. Really, That's a big Chaz? deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's an honor. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's an iconic role. Um, and, uh, and to have it accompanied with the songs of Alan Menken and Glenn Slater the way it is in this show, it's, uh, it's a one-two punch. Talk about the transition. For those of us who are big fans of this movie, yeah. and I tell you, I saw Chaz Palminteri, the one-man mm -hmm. uh, performance of Bronx Tale, and then transition to this. Mm -hmm. What can people expect? People can expect a well-rounded, entertaining family musical. I say family, even though you know you, you witnessed two murders in the show. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's well accompanied by music by uh, Glenn Slater and Alan Menken. You know the famous Alan Menken. And uh, why is that important, by the way? And 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 the, the the music is important. Yeah. But then the De Niro part. Absolutely. Well, the music's important. It's a musical. And he's sort of, Alan sort of harkened back to his, you know, Little Shop of Horror days. It's very indicative of the time. So there's doo-wop, there's a little bit of, you know, Sinatra swing in there, there's got, you got know, some 70s funk in there. It's, a, it's an eclectic mix of, of styles from the era, which really helps. And the De Niro part, what, what was De Niro? He co-directed. Jerry Zaks? Yeah, he co-directed the show with Jerry Zaks. De Niro, as you know, directed the film. And Jerry directed the production that you saw at right. the Walter Kerr. So they're both very familiar with the material. And Chaz trusts them very much. Um, and of course, De Niro, you know, having, you know, decades in cinema, he brought a real attention to detail, which became very valuable to us. And in the movie, he was in he the He played movie. Lorenzo. He, he played great. the father figure in the movie. And so... Uh, was father. Colosro's father, and so having him there was invaluable, just to sort of get, you know, the real authenticity of the place, the time, the era, because we're doing this for Italians from the Bronx, so we want to come across as authentic. It's very important. And Jerry, you know, is a you know veteran theater director, four-time Tony Award winner, and again, he had, you know, done the one-man show with Chaz on Broadway, and so having the two of them there was, was the dream team. Describe um, auditioning. Like for this role? Uh, I, my audition, I think, was another Broadway show. I played a, Ch a, Chaz, uh, a role that Chaz made famous in uh, Bullets Over Broadway, which we turned into a musical in 2014. I played Cheech. And uh, Chaz and Tommy Matola, who's one of our lead producers, came to see that production. Um, 
And they, Tommy approached me at the Tony Awards that year, tapped me on the shoulder just as the lights were about to go down and introduced himself. Are you wearing, you, excuse me for interrupting, you weren't just hanging at the Tony Awards, you were nominated. I was nominated, that's right. That's okay to be hanging for at the Tony Awards. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, people nominated. do it. Yeah. But, uh, but no, I nominated, was nominated. Yeah. Um, and right before it started, Tommy, you know, tapped me on the shoulder, introduced <clears> himself, and said that they were doing a Bronx Tale the Musical, and they were looking at me for the, the role of Sonny, and that they'd be in touch, and then the lights mm. went down, and I lost to Tony. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, um, but, it, but your life... But it was, was great. I, I kind of, you know, I, I, it was a thrilling moment that night, and, uh, and I've been attached to the project ever since. I couldn't be happier. Now, our Bronx Tale, um, the themes are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Loyalty? Loyalty, yeah. Respect. Neighborhood? The neighborhood. Uh, tolerance, I think, you know, is a, is a big part of it. Um, Living in love or living in fear is certainly a, a predominant theme throughout. Is it better to uh, be loved? To be loved or to, to be feared, it depends on who you ask, I think. If you ask Sonny, he's, his modus operandi is to you know, manage things through fear, and he finds that he gets better results that way, and he's at, at less risk, trusting as few people as he possibly can. Nobody, if he has his way. Um, but... You know, I think the audience is left up to their own decision at the end of the piece as to, you know, what the best way to live is. Certainly, Colosro is. You were born and raised in Canada. That's right. Are we not supposed to say that? You can say that, sure. Absolutely. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the New Yorkers and people in this area, I'm from New Jersey and, you know, we're all part of the same milieu. Yeah. Do you sense that a fair number of folks who come and see this and, and know that you are here, do, do you think it matters to them where you're from? I don't think so. No, I haven't really experienced that whatsoever. Like they want you to be from here. Yeah, you know, I think that they, they you know, I think they identify more with the character than anything. You know, they want Sonny to be the Sonny that they, you know, they know and love. Um, and if I do my job uh, correctly, then they, I think that's they relate to you. That's they, all that, that's they all relate that to it. Yeah, borders are, you know, something on a Wikipedia page. You know. Well said. And the other thing is that you dedicate your performance to your father. I do, yeah. Talk about I, that. I lost my father this summer. Um, Sorry. And thank you. And he was a huge influence on my life and very supportive of my career and the direction that I was going and was very much looking forward to hopefully seeing a Bronx tale, um, but very proud of me. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was my honor to dedicate it to him. Growing up as a kid in Canada, mm -hmm. at what point did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Very early, very early. I think I was about 10 years old when I. I did a air band at my elementary school to uh, uh, Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Def, Jeff's Get Nightmare out of here. on My Street. Is that right? And I directed and choreographed it, and it was a big hit. It was a big hit. All the parents called my mom and said, this kid's got a real future. This kid's got something. He's got something. And I had a lot of support growing up as a teenager. Uh, my drama teacher in high school had a, a semi-professional theater company that would, you know, employ you know, young performers at that time. I had a lot of experience there and a, and a few other mentors as well that really, you know, helped propel me forward. Tell folks again where they can see this terrific uh, musical. You can see a Bronx Taylor musical at the Long Acre Theater on 48th Street. Listen, we wish you uh, nothing but the best. And uh, here at Public Television, no disrespect, but we think it's better to be loved. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, it's not bad, that's for sure. It's not bad. Uh, listen, appreciate it. Nothing but the best. Thank we'll you. Be right back right after this. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. To see more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Paul Hoffman is the president and chief executive officer of a great organization called the Liberty Science Center, based in Jersey City, New Jersey. Jersey City, almost on the bank of the Hudson. We're on the edge of Liberty State Park, right opposite Battery Park. I mean, thousands and thousands of school-age children and others go there all the time to see what kinds of things. All sorts of things. So we have live animals, 110 species, including tamarind monkeys. We have aquariums of fish we've pulled out of the Hudson, 80-pound drum fish that my staff has caught right there. We have things that deal with engineering, how skyscrapers are constructed. I mean, you're looking at the Freedom Tower and all of wow. lower Manhattan, and you can understand the construction. It's all interactive. It's all stuff you can do and participate in. Well, tell us about this. We're going to see some uh, video of the myth 
Busters exhibit. Tell us about it. Yeah, so this opens on February 18th and will be there through September. And this is based on the Mythbusters show. So you're actually going to be able to test things. So you're going to see, can a plane take off from a conveyor belt? You know, the conveyor belt's going this way, the plane's going the other. What about the rain? You have to get somewhere in the rain. <laughs> Do you get more wet if you run or if you walk? I mean, we often other things like the magicians do, trying to pull a tablecloth out from under dishware and glassware. Is that possible? What if the glasses are light? Is that better? If they're heavy, is that better? So we have all these kind of things. Some of them are things that people take for granted. Uh, like if you drop toast and it's buttered on one side, does it mm. land on the butter or does it land on the other? We need to know these things, Paul. Absolutely. It keeps me up late at night. And I'm not going to tell you the answer, but if you come to the exhibit, <laughs> you'll be able to discover it for you're yourself. Also, you're also a very good marketer. Always have been. Uh, that's how you get people to come here. The other thing that's fascinating to me is you, you were talking about this planetarium, is it? Yeah. So... You pass us on the, from the Holland Tunnel through Way Extension, 23 million cars go by there a year. Right. We're the huge dome. In that dome is an IMAX film theater. I've the been film, there. Films going out of style. Our equipment is a film projector. It's past end of life. So we're turning that into a digital theater that we can show anything, but also putting in a planetarium system. We'll be able to take the Hayden Planetarium from New York and put it inside our planetarium. How great is that going to be? It's going to be fabulous. It's going to open a year from now. And, you know, all these planetary probes that NASA has, where we got those incredible images of Pluto, or putting rovers on Mars. There's a whole series of these over the next 10 years. All those images will be shown there. We'll be able to connect you right to the researchers themselves. That's coming one again? The images. One year from now, November of 2017. Uh, talk to us about the, is it the lightning exhibit? Yeah, yeah this is pretty cool. Nikola Tesla coils. So these are coils that shoot lightning back and forth. They're driven by music. So you can plug in any electric instrument to it. And this is based on a stunt that David Blaine, the magician, he's our magician in residence. His practice he's from space, Jersey. He's from Jersey and his practice space is at Liberty yeah. Science Center. So he gave us Tesla coils that he used that bombarded him for 72 hours. And we created this show from them that's spectacular on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, when did you become so fascinated with science? You know, it's interesting. I had a neighbor who had a powerful telescope. And I wasn't interested in science like in first and second grade. And then he let me see the rings of Saturn and completely flipped in my mind. And that's what we try to do in Liberty Science Center is create experiences. Not everyone responds to them in the same way, but something to emotionally connect you to the fun of it. Because most people end up in the sciences, even if they're doing good work, like trying to find a gene for a particular form of cancer, they end up there because it's exciting, not because from the age of five they decided they were going to find a cure to cancer. So that's what we try to do, is really get kids excited. Then high school kids, connect them to jobs in New Jersey and New York. Well, the other thing about kids, um, kids' fitness, um, staying healthy, talk about the initiative, uh, is it with the Horizon Foundation? Yeah, we work with Horizon, a great New Jersey company that wants to encourage people to be physically fit. We have a lot of really fun physical challenges. We have the Infinity Climber. This is this gigantic climbing structure. It doesn't go to the ground. You climb in it, it has <clears throat> 19 miles of protective thread so you can't possibly fall out or hurt yourself. So what this Horizon Family Fitness route is, it's a passport where you get rewarded by doing all these challenges, going up a climbing wall, going through our sensory deprivation touch tunnel where it's totally dark and it's a maze to get out the other side. We have I-beams in our skyscraper exhibit where you get strapped into a harness so you can't possibly get hurt, but you get to walk out on the I-beam. It's great particularly for kids and adults too that are nervous about physical things. You do it in a very safe, protective setting all people love it. But kids, particularly even on the autism spectrum, are often scared of some of these challenges, and this is a safe place to overcome You know, uh, I was uh, meeting at breakfast recently with our mutual friend Josh Weston, a big supporter and friend of public broadcasting, who was telling us about the annual event that you have where you recognize, they're not scholars, but they're, they're, they're people who are doing incredible work in science, no? Yeah, absolutely. So they're, you know, people of singular brilliance, we call it the Genius Gala. Well, oh, that's the Genius Gala, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, Genius Gala. So Corey Bargman, for instance, trouble with right. scientists, they're not household names. I right. wish they were, we're trying to make them that. She runs President Obama's Brain Mapping Initiative. It's a $3 million project to map all the neurons of our brain. She discovered the most basic thing in brain science. What's the chemical that causes one neuron to connect to another? 
okay? And we have all sorts of uh, disorders of the brain that probably the connections don't happen or there are too many of them. It's all because of this molecule. So we honored her. Jeff Bezos, now why do we honor him? Right. For what he's doing in private rocketry and Richard Branson. We have a parade of people like that that come to our Genius Gala and talk to our kids. How much do you love what you do? I love it. Every I day? I love it, yeah. It started with looking at the rings of Saturn, and now I can <laughs> to bring adults and children that same kind of joy. Yeah, by the way, tell folks again uh, where the Liberty Science Center is. So we're in Jersey City. We're really easy to get to. You can take a ferry from the World Financial Center. You can take a path train under the river. We have our own light rail stop, and we're right off the Turnpike Extension to the Holland Tunnel. Paul Hoffman, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Liberty Science Center. Our kids go there all the time, tell us great things every time they go and they learn something new. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate Wonderful. it, buddy. Thank you, Steve. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you, man. Thanks. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We are joined by Kent Carrison, who is president and chief executive officer of Fisher Center for Alzheimer Research Foundation. Good to see you, Kent. Good to see you, Steve. Um, I'm also uh, managing director and partner of uh, Cantor Fitzgerald as well. Yeah, let's, let's put things in perspective. Um, let's deal with that first. Sure. You survived 9-11. By about 30 seconds, yes. Talk about it. So when I, uh, I, I went to go vote, because it was a primary day, and uh, there was a little bit of a queue. And uh, when I pulled up, uh, that's when the plane hit my pulled building. Up to the Trade Center. Yeah. And you lost how many of your coworkers? 658. Co-workers. So what we've done, uh, Howard Lutnick and, and our crew, um, have, well, Howard mainly, we've, uh, we've given over $300 million to the family members. And we've given uh, each year we do Charity Day. So we, what we've done is we've, take, uh, we've taken a a really bad day, and we've made it a good day because we raise money throughout the world. Uh, this year, I think it was like $12 million. $12 million. $12 million. Uh, We all give our money back, uh, all of our salaries back and everything else. So uh, we spread the wealth to other charities, and that's the way we make, it makes us feel Cool. And warm-hearted. Yeah. It's, um, it's been, as we move into 2017, we're taping this program at the end of 2016. Um, you're still connected to many of those families, are you not? I am. I have, uh, since 9-12, uh, since I was involved in helping the families heal as much as I could. Um, and I do uh, the memorial every year as well. So I haven't stopped. Right. And I'm not going to let them down. Let's shift gears and talk about another um, important topic. Yes. Um, you brought this book in. I did. Why can't Grandma remember my name? Okay. So... The organization that you're very much connected to, the Fisher Center for Alzheimer's Research Foundation, dedicated to doing what? Alzheimer's research. What do we need to know about Alzheimer's research in terms, and I told you that this has uh, directly affected not just my family, but millions of other families in this region, in this country. Um, so if you, if, if you look at it, Steve, there's 5.3 million people that um, are affected directly by Alzheimer's. And if you do a multiple effect, meaning children of, of, uh, of patients, 
uh, it's about 22 million people in the country that are affected, in the United States. What do you mean by that when you say the children? Um, you're saying that those of us who have parents who are dealing with it that we're affected or won't understand? Uh, yeah. So it's the children of the people that have Alzheimer's, and it's your, your son or your daughter who's also affected by it, and that's why I wrote the book. Yeah, the artwork in the book. Talk about it. Yeah, so... Art therapy is really something that's, it, it helps Alzheimer's patients um, express themselves because they can't speak. Yeah, we're looking right there. Yeah. Um, and then I, I juxtapose that to kindergarten mm. art. So I thought I would bookend life, if you will. And that's why I use the art. Why do you care so much about this Well, subject? Zach Fisher and Elizabeth Fisher were really very good friends of mine. Um, I'm also on the board of Intrepid that Zach started. Uh, and I saw Mrs. Fisher go from dancing on the floor. There she is. Dancing on the floor to not being able to even speak. So it's something that her lack of speaking actually spoke to me. And that's why I want to uh, eradicate uh, Alzheimer's. So, and that, you know, it's, I'm raising money, right? Yeah. Uh, it's Paul, Dr. Paul Gringard, Nobel laureate, who, uh, and his 50 scientists who we support, that's going to be... Uh, a way to solve the problem. Talk to us about, um, I mean, for those of us who have loved ones who are dealing with it right now, that is one thing. And we, we, we pray for and we hope for their um, um, dealing with this as best they can and, and we help them as best we can. But for the future, give us reasons to be hopeful. So the main... Uh, reason of Alzheimer's is it's an enzyme called beta amyloid. And if your brain has too much beta amyloid, it will start affecting your brain. So what Dr. Gringard and the 50 scientists who I support have come up with an idea of doing sort of like a, a test when you're 40, because we know beta amyloid grows uh, way before it affects you. And then we're trying to develop a drug which will eradicate the beta amyloid in your brain. So if someone, this is so interesting, um, if you're watching, and by the way, go onto the website to find out more information. We have it up there right now. Oh, thank you. So well, we're here to, to help educate and inform people. But if, for those of us who, who are, as I said, and, and us means millions of people, as I said, um, we're, we're asking this question. So if your dad or your mom is dealing with it, uh, someone says, well, you know, it's, it's on your mom's side. You know, and I was like, no, it's not that simple. It's not no, that it's simple. not that simple because early onset is tied to genes. Uh, later, Alzheimer's is not tied genetically. So what we're trying to do is snip it in the bud before it affects you. And that is what you just described. Yeah, exactly. And so if you were to say that there are other things that people could do to try to protect themselves as best they could. Sure. Uh, exercise, eat well, um, and be kind to yourself. Uh, in the meantime, hopefully, uh, our 50 scientists will be able to solve the problem. That's the point. That's why I'm raising all the money. You spend most of your time trying to make a difference for other people every day. Yeah, yeah Steve, uh, if you've lived through 9-11, then you dedicate yourself to other people. The book is called, Why Can't Grandma Remember My Name? 
Bent, I want to thank you for, for joining us. And uh, we'll, we'll talk after the air, after we go off the air. I wish we had more time, but uh, thank you for joining us. Thank See you, you next so time. Much. Thank you. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Wells Fargo, Caldwell University, Suez, ready for the resource revolution, Hackensack Meridian Health, Hackensack University Medical Center Foundation, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and by Century 21 Construction. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.